In this video, I'll show you how to use some advanced notes such as fill and dilate notes. These notes are mostly used in more advanced materials to solve specific issues, so it's not easy to show off a simple material using these notes. But I'll finish up this tutorial showing an example of how I use these notes in this space panel material to add variation. We'll be using Material Maker 0 0.95. If you're new to Material Maker, you should watch my introduction to Material Maker video before watching this one. So, first up, we have the Edge Detect node, um, which is pretty straightforward. It detects edges um, between value changes in shapes. Um, so this can obviously be used for lots of stuff, like creating strokes around objects and stuff like that. But it can also be really useful um, with some of the fill nodes. So I'll show you that in a second. So now we go on to the fill node. So um, the fill node uh, takes... You can see here, if we hover over it, it fills areas defined by white outlines of its input. So uh, we had the edge detect here, which are white outlines, and then it generates this, which doesn't look very useful, um, but that's because you don't really use the fill node on its own. What it's actually outputting here is a bounding box information about each of the shapes here. And you can then use um, all these uh, additional fill two nodes um, to, to do something useful with that output. So um, the ones that we have are to position, where uh, you can choose the X or the Y or the position from the center, and the different islands then get um, filled with you know lower values the closer they are on the X axis and wider values the further over they are. We have a fill to size where you can see the they get filled um, with different colors or uh, grayscale values based on their area. Um, you can also choose based on their width, their height, or the maximum between the width and or the height. We can say um, fill to color, um, where we'll use an uh, an input. In this case, I'm using this rainbow. Um, and the center of each island will sample the color input and, uh, and place that color. You can choose a fill to random gray, so it'll just give a random value to each. That can be really practical if you want to you know, um, manipulate the the islands in some way. You can see this changes when we move it around. We can filter random column, so that's just three channels output instead of just the one. And finally, we can uh, filter UV, um, so each uh, island gets it its own little UV layout. You can choose between whether that's um, stretched or whether it tries to make a square um, UV layout. And this um, will then normally be used together with the custom UV node, which I'll show you in a second. And then we have the custom UV uh, node. Um, and as you can see, we take the UV layout and we put that into the UV and we take an input. Um, and then it places that input uh, on each of the UV islands. And uh, you can also see if we set it to square and set, uh, each of the stars end up being um, perfectly square rather than stretch to to sort of the size of the island um you can uh, you can add random rotation and random scale to each of, of these islands as well um you can also choose to have uh, multiple inputs and then you just have to put your input through a tile two by two uh, uh node before you you put it in here similar to how you use the tiler and the splatter node which you can look at my other video to see how that works and uh, let's uh, finish up here with having a look at the dilate node, which uh, takes an, a mask input like, for example, this star, and then it um, it grows the shape with this uh, distance gradient. And this can be really practical for a lot of things. Um, but uh, the reason we're really interested in it is be because you can also give it a, a source, um, which will it'll then use when it's uh, doing the dilation. So you can see here if we give it this rainbow, for example, then it takes the color at this spot and then it sort of drags it out. It also fades it out to black. <clears throat> and you can choose it for it not to do that, to, to keep its its full color all the way. Um, we'll see why that's important in a minute. Um, now that we're on it, we can also just see we have, we have different ways of calculating the distance. That's not really something that matters to us. In this case, we just use the standard Euclidean one. So why is this useful? Why are we talking about that now? Well, if we go back here and look at our former example, then if we uh, 
if we take and invert the edges we had here, then we can take this and use dilate on it. And then all these different uh, outputs we got, we can run into the dilate. We have to be sure that f the fill uh, resolution and the dilate resolution is set to the same or we'll have issues. So what that does is that means that we can now get rid of our edges. So we can get these really clean results because that's one of the problems with the fill node is that otherwise you end up with these edges, right? So we can do the same with this. We can uh, use this one. And all of them get these uh, really nice clean results <clears throat> instead of these edges which would which would cause issues. Okay, so let's have a look at the example material. So um, this is a pretty complicated material where um, I have this height map which is made up of uh, lots of nodes built on top of each other so it's not easy to um, take all these different shapes and assign them different uh, values to give them variation. Um, so when we at this point have this height map um, I instead um, use some um, of the fill nodes uh, to solve this. So it's a uh, it's inside this uh, group. So if we have a look here, we um, we get that height map and uh, we detect the edges on it. Then uh, we invert it. We'll use that for the dilate in a second. But we use a fill, and then we can do fill to random color, which will give us all these little random islands that we can give some variation to. We also do a fill to UV, which we use down here to do. Um, random gradients in different directions to also add variation. And uh, we use uh, that inverted mask we had before with the dilate to uh, to make a nice result without the edges. Um, and we do the same for the for the gradients. And, um, and then we can use those later on to create all kinds of uh, nice little variations in, uh, in this material. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this tutorial and would like to support me in making more tutorials and open source projects like my Godot add-ons, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks to my patron, Joseph Catrambone, Oscar Johnson, Little Mouse Games, Winston, Johannes Wunsch, Space J Zero, Dimitri Keen and Marcus Richter.